Thank mm-hmm. you. 
sort of my backup happy place and this has become <laughs> our backup concert happy place. So, so thanks for your flexibility in, in uh, making this happen and coming out here uh, to hear us play. Um, we're now moving into uh, sort of the meat and potatoes section of the program. This next piece um, was written for Atlantic very recently. We commissioned a composer named Jeff Scott to write up the piece. Jeff uh, is a friend of all of ours. Um, he's a French horn player, uh, teaches at Oberlin, and uh, we just really like his aesthetic. Yeah, Oberlin. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we, we really just love uh, Jeff's aesthetic, and we started to hear the music he was writing, and so um, we asked him if he'd like to write us a piece. We were thinking maybe somewhere around five, five to seven minutes, and he said, well, I'd love to write you a piece, but I want to write you like a giant four-movement work uh, that's really deep and heavy. And so we said, oh, well, great. We love that. So that's what he did. Um, this piece is called Sermon for Saints and Sinners. Or is it Sinners and Saints? I gotta say. Sermon for Saints and Sinners. And um, it's a very deep piece and a very personal piece for Jeff. Um, it's in four movements. And as a part of the commissioning project, Jeff commissioned uh, the great poet A.B. Spellman from Washington, D.C. to write original poems to go along with each movement of the piece. So I think most of you found those on your way in. Um, if not, maybe you can share with the person next to you. But we have them printed out for you in case you'd like to read the poems and get a little bit of a different perspective on the meaning behind each movement as we're playing it. Um, I'll tell you just a little bit of perspective as well before we start each movement. Um, so the first movement, what is the cost of the cost? Yeah, of course. The first movement is called, we're, we're so used to everyone having programs that I can just rip. <laughs> um, the first movement is called Demons Within. Um, and th so the whole piece is kind of a reflection on Jeff's uh, memories of and relationship with a very close family member of his, a uh, member of his immediate family. And um, this first movement is Jeff uh, struggling with this family member's own struggles with addiction. And you'll certainly see that reflected in the poetry. And um, uh, if you know anyone who struggles with addiction, you may know, you may, uh, some of the music here might resonate with you. Um, so, Demons Within.
Yeah, the piece is heavy conceptually, but also on our lips. <laughs> so I'm talking a little bit between each movement. Um, the second movement is called Blues for the Chuckle Up Man. And this is Jeff's memory um, of his family member uh, in the streets of New York. He was uh, sort of a street hustler. Um, if you've ever been to a city and seen someone on the sidewalk with a little table set up playing, <laughs> playing like a street game, like find the marble under the cup, that kind of a thing. Um, he did that for extra money. And um, the game that he invented was called Chuckle Up. And uh, he was known in the neighborhood as the Chuckle Up Man. So that's what this movement, it's about this, his memory of, of uh, that part of his life. Church. And so he took the family into the church, 
um, wasn't a believer, he wasn't a religious person at all, but he still hoped that maybe um, by just entering the church briefly, that maybe he could get a sense of redemption, even if temporarily. Um, and so you'll hear elements of, I think you'll hear elements of the sermon itself that Jeff remembers happening when he walked in, and then a little bit of this sense of arrogance, uh, perhaps, that he saw. Um, that uh, by simply entering a church, uh, one could receive redemption, as opposed to you know more fully uh, engaging with with the family in the way that um, that he wished that this person had. So you'll hear a bit of two sides of that memory that Jeff had. It's called sermon. Thank you. 
you can hear a little of the dance quality well, about two thirds of the way through or about 20 seconds. Um, we'd like to continue with one of the earliest original quintets for brass. Not quite the instruments you see here, but indeed a brass quintet by Victor Ewald. Um, Ewald wasn't quite the first brass quintet composer. I believe it was a composer named Bellon um, that wrote the first brass quintets. But Ewald wrote at least four that we know of. Um, this is quintet number three. Uh, it's one of the only ones that actually is in four movements. Um, you're going to find the third movement particularly beautiful. It's a very lyrical movement. It features a um, um, And then the other two movements are really sort of happy, romantic style movements, a lot of lyricism, and we hope you enjoy it. Each movement is each movement is pretty long, so you can feel free to applaud in between movements. We love having a nice rest in between every movement. <laughs> nice and fresh for every single one.
very much for coming on this beautiful night. Thank you to our students for working so hard and for supporting us, uh, for your organization hosting this through thick and thin. We've had a beautiful night. I'd like to finish off with something from the Balkan Brass Band tradition. Uh, this particular piece is called Buba Mara, which means ladybug, and it was actually featured in the movie Borat. So we hope <laughs>
And so I just, in addition to your support of the seminar, I thank you for your support. Thank you. Thank you again and goodbye. This is your voice at this. <laughs> 